Hey, what's going on, y'all? Right now, you tuned in to the Prince of BK, the King of Fashion, my guy Remo. Let's talk fashion every Wednesday morning at damn, I'm about to say eight eight a.m. Fuck. But- What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Remo, aka Mr. Rich Threads, and I'm back. And I got Amy Queen, my guy, in the building with me. Hello, how you feeling? Man? New York Love is in the building, What's and up? we in Philly, as y'all see. What's up, man? Chillin', chill. You finally had a chance to actually meet each other. Linking up, linking up. We we talking all day, yeah, every day on yeah. the damn text. Now we here live in flesh. <laughs> we here at the damn JBT meet and greet. Damn yeah. being being in Philly. So please, for the people out there from New York or elsewhere, don't kill us because of the backdrop. You know, it just came with the plates. We ain't set this up. It's the mural that they had set up. So. We still on code, then. You got, you got the Met. The Mets, I got Godspeed. Shout out to Brooklyn. Exactly. And we holding it down. First of all, welcome to Let's Talk Fashion. Oh, I greatly appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? You got a good team. Listen, I told you I wanted to do the damn, the Berlin tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we're going to do that. We got to stroll through the shit when we do that. Yes. For yes. sure. And just look through the different pieces because people be sleeping on places like Burlington. Yeah, Ross. Yeah. Marshalls. Yeah, all of those. You can find shit. some shit in there, man. That's a fact, though. That's like thrifting, but you got to have patience for shit like that. You do. Yeah. You gotta have a lot of patience because there's the one thing with that. You might go there one day and the inventory is fire. Then you go there another day and you're like, well, this is trash. There's nothing but these whack little feline sneakers on the shelves. Yeah. You go there one day, bro. I went there one day, I got two pair of gel lights. Right. The damn aces. I got me actually three pair. Before it's just cool. $29 a pair. Ooh, that's a steal. Foot action, they selling them for 130 at the time. Mm-hmm. $100 off. Bro, I like those stores, but it take, I need time to really yes, go through all yes. that shit, man. So now that we're talking fashion. Yes, sir. What's your moment? What brought you into mm. fashion? That's that's usually my opening question to everybody. Like, what brought you to fashion? I would have to say it's my father. Okay. My pops, God bless his soul. He was the dude, like, I look back at old photos mm. when I was in pre-K. He showed up to my graduation, all his gold chains on. He was that type of dad, like the cool dude, you know what I'm saying? Come through three rope chains on, got name rings and all that type of shit. him. All that stuff. Shots and shit. shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't mad at him. Whatever the latest shoe was, he had it. And so like, at that point in time, when you know your pops is him, that's kind of how you... Yeah, but I would say that my style is a, a little bit more subdued than his, as you can see what I got right now. It's calm. It's a little calm. Camo. Yeah. Cargo shit. Little graphic tee. Yeah, I, look, I stepped up. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I was just drilling that tank right there. Yeah, man. That's so fashion ready. But, mm-hmm. no, listen. At what moment, though, after after you, you seen your pops was hurt, what era did you start enjoying when you mm-hmm. start putting stuff together for yourself? Cause that's the time, like, you know. First time I went to Woodbury Commons. Oh, Duh. when I went to Woodbury Commons, before thing, school, before school, shop. Yes, yeah, yeah. Go to Woodbury Commons, I'm saying, and then I went to the damn um the polo. The po- I was about to say the polo store was a must. The outlet, yeah. And especially with me, as you can see, the brothers vertically challenged. I'm a small guy, so I couldn't be out there wearing all that stuff that was popping at the time, like the Mecca and the Nietzsche and all that other stuff that people were wearing. Yeah, because I don't want to be swimming in my clothes. Mm. I wasn't wearing, like, fitted clothes intentionally because I thought it looked cool or the, you know, the trend. You was like that for shit. No, I just wanted to just fit. Yeah. Because it looked sloppy as hell when you... 
Five, six, five, seven. You swimming in your damn pants. Five, 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 six, yeah, five, yeah, five, seven. Yeah, yeah, I see those socks. No, I got, I got horrible posture. You I see me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got to get my right. shit together. Right. And you know what I'm saying? Stand up straight. They not like us. We got, we got I'm crashing it. We got Jay Harcourt. <laughs> Come say hello to the people again. We shoot a place. We shoot a live episode right now. I'm home. crashing. I'm crashing. I apologize. Yo, yo, get the chocolate for shirt. Some attention, no matter what to do. We got chocolate on your shirt. Man. Don't worry about that, man. What's up, man? worry about the little What's things, up? brother. That's the little things, man. Really? I'll let you know I'm doing my shit. Speaking of polo, how, how <laughs> ironic is it that he walks in in the <laughs> middle of a polo conversation? Yeah, you don't even know we were yeah. talking about the polo. Y'all talking about Ralph? Oh, my bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not on the day, but day, that's okay. Don't you just have been to the one up there uh, at Wilgar Commons? Upstate New York? I heard about it. I heard about you. Lose your mind, yo. We record, man. Get out of here, yo. You lose your mind. You're talking, Ralph. I'm the essence of Ralph, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. Ralph sends me shit. Yeah, I know you don't want to hear, but it is what got his personal number. Back to Aunt McQueen, cause I don't know what you're talking about, man. So, so hi, right, so well, so from the time that you feel as though, all right, now I'm going to polo and I'm putting my lips together. What age, what age was that? Yeah. About 13, 14, like going into high school. That's, Before that, and, that's, that's when you start smelling yourself. Yeah. yeah. And then you start yeah. cultivating your own style. It's like, nah, you're not going to just pick these clothes and whatever else. It's like, I want to dress how I want to dress. Yeah. I want to dress how I want to dress. I've always been into the damn graphic tees, too, because, again, it's, it's like we mentioned the West Indian. Yeah. That component of it is like, you go out to Jamaica, if you're down there on the hip shrimp by Montego Bay, mm -hmm. you see a whole bunch of people. And this is before the brand was established. I'm talking about the Bob Marley. Yeah, 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 yeah. Folks were out there selling the T-shirts, selling the brakes, yep. all that stuff. So I had so many damn Bob Marley T-shirts in high school. So I had my little polo jeans on. Bob Marley yeah, T-shirt might have like a little... Long sleeve to you underneath. Okay, little, yeah, yeah, for oh, dirt, 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 yeah, yeah. See, I don't know how that go. Pull my little skater shit. Rocking joints like you know, like uh, Converse's Vans. Mm -hmm. All my other shoes that I had, I wear them in gym. Like my damn, my Jordan, I wear them in the gym. The gym. Yeah. yeah. I just went Jordan to gym. See, if you went Indian, your mom said you, you gotta have your good sneakers for right? the The other stuff you can ride around it, but your good shoes. They don't be too far from the house. Yeah. Favorite pair of shoes I had in high school, though, I had a damn pair of uh, Reebok pumps, the Omni lights. Oh, I remember the pumps. I used to love the pumps. They went get up with me, though. They was hype, man. I had the Omni lights. Shout out to my older sister, 104 mm -hmm. years older than me. She had a job, took me to the mall, and I'm going to throw. And this is around the time, because remember, talking about high school, dips had been super popular. Crazy. So I had her buy me, like, uh, Six years old back jerseys some other shit. I was red, white, and blue. Oh, you tell me I was a diplomat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> you know that ever in town. Yeah, like in New York, York City, it was a big oversized Pelly Pelly yeah. or the or the, uh, the shits with the Jeff Hamilton's yeah. with the with the patches on little brick. Yeah, that was the time. The furthest I went was with the jerseys. I didn't do I Jeff Hamilton, the Abrax, none of that. I was getting so disrespectful. Like, you couldn't tell me. I'm from Brooklyn. Yeah. Like, I thought I was from Brooklyn. Yeah. But being that, you know, we made it special. We crashed it. Let's talk fashion, Mr. Rich Trans, Remo in the building. What up, y'all? Hey, can't nobody break it down like Aunt McQueen. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see what he got right there, folks? You see, baby, we see him. Let's talk fashion in the building. Right back at you. <laughs> I got you on deck, bro. My, my God, my God. Hey, yo, how bad I get the green one? Your green kind of like my favorite color, yo. Right? Tell, tell them chill out. Tell them relax. I ain't no green one, yo. That's tell them special oh, order. You feel me? Damn. Special order. Exclusive squeeze? That's your dude name with squeeze squeeze? squeeze? That squeeze green. <laughs> Let them know. All <laughs> right. Yeah. Anything goes ahead of day, y'all. Uh, things yeah. just popping oh, up. Oh, What's up, Big Dre? Everything all right, man? We coming out for one more set, man. How you feel? Yeah. I'm feeling good, You're man. this fashion shit right there. I got to ask you a question about the Jeff Hamilton. Go ahead. Apron rights. When it comes to the leathers and the bombers, which one is your favorite brand at that time? To be honest with you, 
At that time, my favorite was actually none of them. It was the, the, the I had a butterscotch. Butterscotch, some shit it was cool. And my shit was red with a red fur. It was a solid color, but the shit like a shirt. No, it was a leather jacket. The shit was so heavy, y'all. I didn't. I could wear a t-shirt and a hoodie. Like I needed the wooden hanger to hang the shit up. I paid about eight hundred dollars for that jacket. Yeah, but that right there was butterscotch, soft, soft as a motherfucker, y'all. And you woke up. And you got a red fur collar on your shirt? Man, you couldn't tell me that. Because the Jeff Hamilton, they were made out of, some of them were made out of Vigo. Vigo level. All of them were the little level. But they was paying for a pageant for the whole of them. So, like, during that time, they had Wazam's. That's Wazam made the um, scarf. And the stitching. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was that was for like the uh, Wazam's, and then they had the Aegis. Aegis was a little bit heavier, but street niggas had Aegis. Yeah. And then the right. Pele Pele's was kind of like the blend of both worlds, because they were bright and flashy, but they were heavy and expensive. So, but uh, but the sky shade from what I enjoyed the most. But second to that would probably be Pele Pele. Mm. That was a lot. I never had one, man. I never had one. Oh, don't forget, don't forget Vanson's. Vanson too. Vanson levels is left behind in the jacket, but the only thing is they cut short. So anybody told I'm just gonna fuck with you. Jeans at that time, what was your go to? Um classic guess, triangle, triangle level. Okay. That was kind of my okay. go to. Oh, you remember during that era, polo, remember the cell phone pocket pants? Mm -hmm. Or the uh the guests with the pinstripes? Mm -hmm. All them had the pinstripes. And you know you were standing, you had a sharp the crease. crease down the what? So definitely have a uh pocket. I the iron his pants with the damn with the Niagara with the star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, listen. I had that star. A can a can of a can of pants. <laughs> straight right. down the line. But while we here. And get a computer. Computer computers be pewing with this guy right here. Yes, sir. Yes, Let's sir. jump into why we hit. Yes, this sir. week we had a few events. Aside from ours, what's some boxing going on? Mm -hmm. Boots came home. Jaleel, local kid. Mm -hmm. He had a show. Which one you want to start with? How about we start with the event as a whole? Okay, then before the, we even get to the fights. Yeah. yeah. Because been draining myself. We was back here at the Airbnb checking it out. Mm -hmm. been looking at it. I'm telling myself I said the atmosphere looked lit. And y'all were entertainment. So yeah. what was it like? All right, all right. So let's start off on the on the arrival. Eddie, Eddie did his thing. Yeah. The look of it looked like it was a big fight. Mm. From the place being packed out, ladies came out there half naked, so you know. Ooh. That's the way to really make it look like some. Yeah. And then um, you know, it didn't give that I don't poo poo on about but the the hanging feel. It didn't give that at the bar play. Because on the walk up, you seen the Titan Trons with boots, boots names on the sideline. Like the lead up it, it gave to it's a homecoming fight. So he did good on that part. And then when you get in there, hey. So before you even step in the building, you already set in the tone with yeah, the Yeah, with, with the look of it. Yeah, but yeah. it felt like a block party. Versus like you was in there for like a like a business meeting. Yeah, it's not a stuffy type of environment. They, just, they had people had their drinks, they had their smokes. Smokes in the gas. Heavy. Oh heavy. In the bathroom looked like it was like I was smoking right there. But it was a vibe in there for the whole night. And then you know, the fights it landed a few, you know what I mean, entertaining moments. We didn't get the real knockouts that, like, you know, that yeah. we wanted, but it was an event. It was a time. For sure. For sure, for sure. We can start with even on the sky that was like, whoo, she put on a clinic, man. Bro, but she was, she out of all of them, she was kind of the lowest one pandering to the crowd, too. Oh, yeah. Because she was kind of like making her mess and just tapping on her. The crowd was going crazy. I must say, though, being in a fight, oh, watching a fight. Live. Mm -hmm. It's so much distractions going on. You talk with people next to you, talking shit, you looking at the screen. You either looking at the screen or the sort of thing, but I didn't realize how much when you speak and you were hearing it to friends, you're talking to friends, and then you watching it on TV. How much TV shit makes it more entertaining between the music and shit no, like that? I kid you not. We were having this conversation last night. Yeah. And I said, because I thought about going to get some nosebleed tickets. They were like $35 to the time. I yeah. was like, 
Shit, I might as well just say that. Now, I've really thought about it. Yeah. Everything that you just said, we take for granted. Mm-hmm. The production, yeah. the TV magic mm-hmm. that just intensifies the whole event. Absolutely. Because you see all these other little tidbits, these little interesting things, like it'll flash something on the screen, a little overlay saying he's knocked out five of his last six opponents. Yeah, like, it's, like, it's a build up. It builds it's a build up. Yeah. And now you're like, damn, you did all that? Yeah. And then you see all like the little montage beforehand. You don't want to miss this fight. This mm-hmm. is Jerron Boops, and it's, he's absolutely done. And yeah. they just really make you want to see it. They're going to be a job of building up. You see the B roll. You see all that stuff. Yeah. It's like when you watch it live, you don't get that. Mm-hmm. Now, the experience is cool because you're there with other fans. You might have some funny moments that people may not pick up on TV, yep. but I feel like the TV, and then here's the other thing. You live, you at one vantage point. Yeah, every yeah. second, that's your view. That's your view for the night. night. For the night. night. Yeah. You watch it on TV, you gonna, you might get an overhead shot. Yeah. You might get a shot from the ring apron. You might get a shot from overhead. The they, got the, they got the candles on the dollies. Everything is moving around. Shit is on the boom. It's, it's crazy. And then not only like that, but also the commentary, too. Yeah, absolutely. The commentary. I don't know if y'all heard it on the TV side, but the, the entrance, they play the Undertaker music. Mm. I don't know if they heard that on TV. Or no. They were allowed to play that, but in the stadium. When Boost play, came out? When Boost came out, he played the Undertaker. And had on Hawkins and all that shit. I was just like, oh, it's a disappearance. It's late. So it's like different little elements you miss right. being in the building or on TV. So right. you mean you can take something from there and enjoy it, you can take something from there and enjoy it. But overall, I think maybe just did like the production wise. It was it lent it lent for what oh, you're yeah. supposed to be. Oh yeah. Now let's get to some of the performances. <laughs> so let's we'll start there. He was in there tough with uh our our, our BX zone. P Dawson. Yeah, pistol P, whatever that was for him. You know. But I think it was a good test. A veteran scrappy guy and he kinda like he pushed the needle with the kid. Like I think that that's right right there. The build up kind of took over anticipation for the night because they got a little gritty yeah, choking, choking each other, joking, slapping, man. Yeah, yeah. Was, man. they damn near. It felt like they were gonna fight. Right, right. They face. face. Yeah, yeah. So it was chippy. But they showed love to each other after the fight went on twelve rounds. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, I just think it was a good test for him because he, he's still young. It was his first uh, fight. Uh, going to 10 rounds. Yeah. First on, on his own, but also yeah. going 10 rounds. And that's the one thing that we don't take into account sometimes when it comes to some of these young fighters. Like we look at these young guys and we ask all the questions about the tangible things. Yeah. Like, does he have a chin? Because we hear that all the time. Like, mm-hmm. Can he take a punch? We haven't seen him take a punch yet. Or yada, yada, yada. Will his power translate against a yeah. certain level of competition? But what we discount sometimes is the other things, the things that we can't see. Mm-hmm. Like how poised is he? Yeah, I'm telling you, right? If you go custom to fight for four rounds, six rounds, and you gotta get a guy yep. up out of there, bing, bing, bing. If you can't get him out of there within that time, do you stay the course, do you stay patient, or do you just get frustrated? Also, you get a chance to see, because he's known for as a guy that presses the action. Right. Do you not get pace yourself now? If that's that you don't empty up the gas tank no. completely. By the tenth round, there's nothing right. left. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. And it's building up it's building up till you get to the championship rounds where you you know, you got a title fight, now you can go twelve rounds. Absolutely. You're not nervous of, you know what I mean? Could I take can I take my floor with the gas without, you know what I'm saying, giving up too much or right. you know? But I think it, overall it was a good yeah. test. Right. You know, and moving forward. You know, I think that division has got so young with all the those the older guys kind of moving out of the way, yeah. whatever. And I just think yeah. now, like being that he's so fashion, so coaching, but like on the promotional side, I think these young kids are getting a chance to pick their audience. I would say, right, and what they want to follow and how they gonna build themselves up. So I think it was a good test for him. He's twenty years old, twenty one, maybe twenty one, we twenty one, something in that range. But he's still young enough that. Eddie's on his side. He's mm-hmm. giving him opportunity to make himself a bigger star. So, the coolest thing I'm kidding. Man. 1,000%. Because to be 21 years old, you fighting in the 10 round, and not only that, but you're in there in front of 14,000 people. 
who knows how many people tuned in last night on the zone. Yeah. And then now you're in a co-main situation. Yeah. So I, I think that it's abundantly clear that they grooming the young man. And like you said, yeah. you the young, you the next one up. So we're going to keep you in this space, get you accustomed to being in this atmosphere, being in these big arenas. Being on a big card like that, yeah, and then boom. So then now you don't get spooked because sometimes what happens, and uh, credit to you, something that you always say is, we shouldn't be waiting so damn long to find out what what you are, is. Oh, what you are, yeah. right? Yeah. Because we see that sometimes where they build them up too damn slow and they just looking to pad these guys' records and they're not putting them in certain situations, yeah. and then they get in there in a sink or swim moment. And they don't look to me. They just, they're not up, even up for the fight. Man. Right. Because they haven't been being wound. Yeah, I don't mind the loss. If you lose, you always come back. If it, if it's crowd pleasing, they're right. always going to want to see you. So it's not saying that they're going to be disposable or we don't want to have at them no more. No, no that's not what you're saying. You're saying they're athletes that are professionals. Right. If somebody has to win, or somebody has to lose. Right. Yeah. That's pretty much that's right. right. Tough question. Staying off the little. Who would you like to see in next? I can't think of any particular name, but maybe another opponent similar to Pete Dobson. Maybe not just stylistically, but also um, a guy that's tough. He got fortitude. Like, Pete Dobson didn't lay down. Yeah. And Jaleel's a guy that likes to put hands on guys, and he likes to get them the hell up out of there. Mm -hmm. That's his thing. That's Mr. Belt to ass. He's coming to whoop you. He's coming to stop you. So the more that he's in fights like that with a guy like Dobson, now I feel like it forces him to become a lot more creative to get those stoppages. Because we've seen in the past you had certain guys that they had power, like a Jack Lacey. Yeah. But then when he got to a certain level of competition, these guys knew how to nullify power. They like, are right, he got a left hook. How do we stay away from that? Mm -hmm. Deontay Wilder with that damn right hand. Mm -hmm. Like if he would have cultivated a little I bit of that, but all of that you right. add and adding other punches to it and building around it, layering it. Tyson Fury, what was he able to do? Smother the right hand. We're not going to let him get the right hand off. It's not just a matter of wearing him down and taking his legs by like leaning on Keeping it in his pocket. Exactly. Yeah. Keeping it in his pocket. So that Jaleel, with the experience that he had last night with a guy like Dobson, who's yeah. crafty and yeah. smart. Well, you know, sometimes. Yeah. yeah. You get him there with more guys like that. You know, now I think that his creativity goes to another level because... All right, I can't just mow these guys down. I can't just step to them and put hands on them. I got to set my shots up. I got to be a little bit more deliberate. And like you said, also working on my pacing. Yeah. Sometimes step on the guys. Other times, like, okay, you just ain't ready to go yet. We got to get them to the body a little bit more, take them legs a little bit more. Then we step on it again once the guys start wearing down yep. and being methodical. So my question, pressure. my question now is, will be to follow we seen him at 47. Mm -hmm. Do you want to stick him back at 47? Or, you know what I mean? Because he looked a little bit, you know, drawn yeah. out. Yeah. So, like, I wouldn't want to, say, give him a little bit tougher com uh, competition. Mm -hmm. And the weight is an issue. And now that kind of hamstrings his performance with the tougher oh, yeah. competition. So, like, I don't That's know. That's a great point. 47 would be the landing spot for him. You know, but it's a, it's a, but, but but that way, like you said, it is very tricky. It's very nuanced. Yeah. It's very nuanced because here's the other thing. Yeah. I think it depends on how soon they get them back in there. Because if they line up a fight within the next two, three months, maybe even four months, something like They're that. Really not to blow up too much. Exactly. Keep, keep them right keep back. Them active. Yeah. Keep them active. So when it's like, all right, we got a next date for you in October or something like that. Shit. Most camps are what? Eight weeks? Yeah. That's two months. Two months. So yeah, he, he, so he, he got two months. If he got, if he got what? August, September. See him back in November, December. Exactly. Possibly. And you can keep him busy. You can't blow up in between there. Yeah. Just keep him active. Keep him responsible. Keep him active. Keep him active. Keep him responsible. Yeah. And I believe that's what we're killing a lot of these guys with the inactivity. Mm -hmm. It's to not have them fight dates and you got time. And, and how the hell are you going to tell these dudes when they start seeing them big checks? Hey, you yeah. can't go out and eat. Yeah, you yeah. can't go to the club. Y'all bring the lobster and the steak. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> you, you, you got it. You now. got it now. You, you got it now. It's a little heavy. You got it now. Being at, being at you know, 
Once again, we in Philly. Let's get into the main court. Yes, sir. Boots. He got a late replacement uh, opponent. What did you think about this this fight right here? Let's start with that, with the late replacement, with the opponent. Mm -hmm. And then I want to jog back to something that you said that I believe is extremely important. Mm -hmm. Moving forward for Boops mm -hmm. and how we get him opponents. Yeah. The guy is the IBF champion. You know? And it's difficult to get guys who want to fight him yeah, with a, a belt. Yeah, he's a big, but he's a, but think about it. He's a big guy, he's a heavy puncher. Young, athletic, switch it up. All, all, that, all that shit. All right. All all that, everything. That, everything. That really it. everything. But the thing is, like, if people know they're not as talented as him, mm -hmm. but still have to get confined into making 10 miles after the next day, right? it's going to be real hard for him. So he's either going to have to overpay, mm -hmm. or he's going to have to find his way into a right. unification yeah. right. sooner or later where... People feel as though they could be right. at their help age. But even that might be tricky because then you got guys that might not be willing to unify. They're like, hey, I'll just take my chances with the mandatory. There's only one name. I'm going to just take my chances with the mandatory. So everything that you mentioned, the reason why I brought it up and I felt like it was such a fantastic point yeah. with the build up, mm -hmm. the attendance appeared to be on point. They, they have it's a couple 60, of... 16,000 or something like that. Yeah, it's crazy. Yo, with TV, we yeah. watch it on the high pads, but not on TV, but we was watching it. Yeah. And it was packed out. Yeah. And I was seeing the videos and the photos y'all was sending. So, A, he keeps him in some, some events like that. Yeah. You build up his profile, and then now you make the, the juice worth the squeeze. Both. Crazy. Violation. We're going to cut that out. No, we're going to leave that in there. But we're going to put pause right there. Mm -hmm. See how they did the hands? Look. Paul. Yeah. Yeah. So that was crazy. Yeah. Okay. So the juice out of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. You know exactly what I'm saying? Yeah. You gotta make it worth a while. Yeah, you're right. Like you said, like if the guy got a belt and you only want to fight him for a belt, and a lot of these guys, they say what? They got in the box because of legacy. Yeah. They want to become champions. And you got a guy right there in front of you where you can get an opportunity to get a title and you find a way to start to back out the fight or not even take the fight at all. So we're gonna make it worth a while. That corner. Yeah, so I keep raising that profile up, keep raising that stock up, and then now the demand to be different because he'll have the cash shape. But, but, but even though yesterday, right, you got paid late opponent. It was a low blow, not a low blow. It seemed like he just wanted out of there. To be honest with you, it seemed like you know what I mean. Like really? I've had enough. Like all right, this this kid is real good, and he fought. He fought across. Yep. And for him to look like he was ready to lay down, pin, ears pinned down, and everything, he wanted the whole five hundred to deal with a lot of shit. Oh, yeah. The crowd started booing in there. He's like, Yo, "What's going on?" Punch on him a little bit more. Tied in the corner. Check clear. That damn the foul crazy. Yeah, but Boost <laughs> gonna Boost gonna go through this more because. <laughs> He has the, the fights, mm -hmm. but he's like the child, he's like the kid, the golden kid that everybody clamors out there. But we don't get a chance to see the greatness. Right. To have 30, with 31 fights now, 30? 32. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 32 fights. We don't know much, enough about that. We hear Jim Hype. But the world, and, and once again, Eddie, it's Eddie's responsibility to try to make it happen. But I think his best bet is to go up. Possibly, but the names of the who's but the names of them, but who's to say that these guys are throwing them on the big one? Like, the greatest. I feel like all of them up there fighting each other. I feel before they don't be yeah, but most of the time, them guys they fight the title, so on and so forth. These guys were already in position, but so, being a title holder, yeah, he could leverage that idea. Possibly, I th I think that'll be his best bet because it's more money up there as well. Because forty seven no longer has names that you could really overpay somebody. Right. Who would you pay at 47 to overpay him right. to fight him? Because Barrios was kind of would be like, it'll be 50 50. Mm. There's no real A side in that. So, other than that, who's left? Well, it depends though, because I'm, I'm trying to think. Normally, we're not what, 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 what event has um, Barrios had? Like, he's been in some damn good fights and some great opponents like uh, Tank, Keith Thurman, all guys. 
But has he has he headlined an event the last night? Sixteen thousand people. Yeah, him and Thurman headlined. It was the main card on that fight, but that was a little while ago. I don't know what the what's name of like. the numbers wise. Yeah, yeah. but uh, that would be one. I think he knows how to carry himself in a. And then they hold you in a mess and follow it. That's true. So, yeah, that bar is tremendous. So I'm thinking be, in that instance, that would be the closest. Yeah, like give give or take. But you see what you see what you see what Barrios what they talking about right now with uh, Pacquiao. Yeah, Pacquiao. But see, if Pacquiao, Pacquiao, he begins that Pacquiao fight now. It's a whole different conversation. Oh yeah, see, it's between him and both sides. There you go. You get skyrocket to a whole different element. There you go. With money yeah. and all the other shit. So yeah. possibly yeah. goes to going in being the B side to that. Right. You know what I'm saying. So that's why I'm saying if you go up to uh, fifty four and you want to call out a little bit. Or uh, Fandora, Tenzu, those names are there scattered around where they're all trying to vibe for the same. Tenzu, I would say maybe Tenzu because of Australia. I think that Lubin is a terrific fighter, but he's not somebody where. He'll be there to fight him. No, I think he'll be there to fight him, but what I'm saying, well. I mean, show me these ones. It would have to be. I think that Lubin gives him a damn good fight. Yeah. I don't think that fight is necessarily a showcase. If he was able to make light work of Lubin. No, no, not light work. Like, he's actually able to perform because. Oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. Like, Lubin said, what kind of fight? He's coming to talk. Yeah, he's yeah. definitely not going to play that. Not that. That should be seen last night. That was his competitor, man. Because, uh. <laughs> Lubin, that fight he had with Fedora, that was a grueling fight. Yeah, and he, he took he, way he more quick. He could have made it, that fight so much more easy. He ain't quick. Did, but. So shout out to Lubin, man. Show, show to him. Tremendous heart in that fight. And he's got a sharp percentage. I think that is a good fight, but that would definitely have to be here in Philadelphia. Yeah, it could be here in Philadelphia. Wait, where's Lubin uh, from? He's from this area, right? Not too far. I'm not sure. Where Lubin is? Isn't he from like the headbanging gym or something like that? I don't think he. I don't think he, I think he's in the DMV area. But whatever the case is, I think that'd be a good, a good, you know, test for him. But I don't know if he's gonna jump out of the vision based on conversation with Eddie was saying. As far as like you know, him looking to kind of solidify himself as a name and an entity in in, in the division. Mm -hmm. So moving off from the division. Too fast. It won't really yeah. like, I don't know. There's like, a lot of questions. What's the question. name? Just build up the profile. Yeah. Build up the profile. Um, and then maybe within a year or so, maybe within. And then the other thing with Boots too is his fights are short as hell. Most of them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's twenty nine knockouts and thirty two fights. So he's not taking a lot of damage. If Eddie can keep him busy. Yeah. Then he can just build up his profile that way. Mm -hmm. Doesn't necessarily have to be against a specific guy, but just keep hosting these fights. The people keep coming out. You keep giving, keep them the highlight real. Keep them the eye, yeah, keep them the eye of the public as well with with lending to his profile, right. cash in. Because we ask the guy across the street saying, "Yes, you going to the booth fight?" Like, Who's boots? We him them. Right. We should know. Everybody should know him. You know what I'm saying? So now that's a little different wrinkle. Give him the Allen Iverson treatment, man. Shot and shoot. Shoot him to the roof. Right. Mm -hmm. We got a guess. Yeah, look like Coach Kenny or somebody like that. Get it, get it, ladies out and about. Sorry about that. Champ just walked in the building. Yeah. While we was talking, live on here. Listen, man, I showed you that I should have been here at the motherfucking meet and greet. JBT did major. This shit is crazy. We done wrapped up all the fights. We didn't talk about a little bit of fashion. We ain't get to no fashion clashing. We got some other footage. Yeah. That being said, it's your boy Remo, aka What's the Risk Rest. AKA the Prince of Brooklyn. AKA the God. AKA Let's Talk Fashion. AKA we gotta we gotta run down. It's the AKA to the AKA. We gotta run and that's down why and that's why I'm here. I'm with the computer. Aunt McQueen, Casuals Corner. Yes, sir. He comes on, he feels like he might be on a Twitch. He might be on a 
Looking good. So whenever he gets out of jail, see, I gotta get like you, man. Damn, I love shit. like you. We gonna put these things together. We gonna figure the it out. Productions and all that stuff. We like gonna that. figure it out. Yes, sir. Good looking on joining me this week for a special episode. We on the road again, man. And on that note, I'm out of here. Peace. Peace.